Our scripture today is 1 Samuel chapter 25. Um, an interesting little story for us here on how to deal and how not to deal with a difficult person. We get to see David here come up against a character named Nabal. The passage tells us that Nabal is a wealthy man, uh, but he's also not a very nice man. In fact, he's pretty rude. Um, he doesn't care about people, and when he deals with people, he's just kind of nasty. And it just so happens that David and his men have been out in the field with Nabal's servants, with his shepherds, while they have been out shearing the sheep and doing their things with the sheep. Uh, David and his men had been protecting them and staying around them and just keeping them safe. And it comes to this point where David decides that he is going to send to Nabal and tell him what him and his men have been doing and ask for provisions. Of course, we already know Nabal is not a nice person and he doesn't respond well to David's request. He basically laughs in David's face and he says, who are you guys? He, he knows who David is. He's heard of him, obviously, because he says, you guys are just a bunch of criminals. Get out of here. I'm not going to give you nothing. David does not respond to this well, does he? He basically says, you know what? Uh, keep talking. I'm going to come and wipe you out. Uh, I'm going to come up there with my men, and we're going to take out you and the rest of your men, and we're just going to completely destroy you uh, because of this insult that you've given me. When I read through this, though, such it's such a different side of David's character than we've seen before because we've seen him to be a man of integrity, a man who takes human life seriously in the way that he has respected Saul. But maybe David had just taken a little bit too much abuse from Saul and he just kind of been bottling it up and he hadn't been talking to his therapist and he hadn't been letting it out properly because he obviously has a lot of pent-up aggression because he's getting ready to unload it on Nabal for this um, slight that has been made against him. Thankfully, we see in the story that Nabal has been has married a woman, a godly woman, a woman that has some sense. And she hears about what's going on, and she really is the peacemaker of this situation. She gathers up supplies, and she takes them to David. And she, she goes out and she offers peace, but she also offers David some very good wisdom. And she says, you know, why would you take vengeance into your own hands, basically? Um, you're going to be guilty of sin if you carry this out and you strike my husband down. Yeah, he's a, he's a bad person. He's a fool. But um, if you strike him down, you're going to be guilty of sin and you're going to be guilty of his blood. David realizes how right she is, and he says, God has sent you to me in order to stop me from sinning in this way. How do we deal with difficult people? Um, the people in our lives who have hurt us, and people who don't care about us, and um, they've insulted us, and they have not apologized to us, and they are not going to apologize to us. One way and the way that we see in this chapter, the first way that David does is he takes matters into his own hands. He's going to handle it himself. He's going to let him know what he thinks. Actually, he, uh, he I mean, he's going to take up the sword. Now, we probably wouldn't do that, but we get vengeance in our own way, right? Um, we usually use our words um, most of the time to get vengeance. Um, but... Abigail is an example of the right way to handle a difficult person and the way that she shows David is to commit yourself to God, to know that he is the judge ultimately over all of us. And so this is a New Testament uh, principle that we learned from Christ, who when he was reviled, when he was attacked, when he was insulted, he didn't fight back but he allowed it to happen to him in order to show his love. Um, and he gave himself completely over. And so um, we to do, we're to do that too. We entrust ourselves to God knowing that he's the judge. And when we allow ourselves to be wrong without taking up arms and without needing to get vengeance ourselves, we preach the gospel in that way and we preach Christ's love to those who need to hear it. Um, and we see in the end of this chapter that God does take judgment into his own hands. He judges Nabal 
who ends up dying very shortly uh, after this happens. Hopefully today, if we're not someone like Abigail, we don't have the wisdom to make a right decision. We have someone like an Abigail in our lives who will be willing to be obedient to God and to step up and come forward like Abigail did and uh, do what is right and speak wisdom into our lives. Let's remember that we don't have to take vengeance for ourselves. We don't even really have to defend ourselves. We can entrust ourselves to God and let Him be our defender. Let Him be the judge of those who wrong us. We worry about submitting to others so that we, even if through suffering, we're going to preach the love of Christ to them through our words and through our actions.